A number of colleges and universities are paying off students' outstanding bills. Yesterday, the City University of New York, or CUNY for short, announced debt forgiveness for more than 50,000 students impacted by the pandemic. The famed Spelman and Clark Colleges in Atlanta are also among the latest pledging to wipe out student debts. But the moves are reigniting a larger debate about student loan forgiveness in Washington. White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks has the story. Um, yes, so I so ran you were busy. that. Yes. Back on campus at her alma mater, Alinda Williams tells me at first she did not believe what she was seeing. I looked and my bill was zeroed out. Just zero? You just had zero? It said zero. Like, I owed nothing. The first in her family to graduate from college, Williams worked each semester on campus, sometimes two jobs at a time. But the bills piled up until last May, right before graduation, when Delaware State University decided to wipe hers clean. What has it meant for you and your family and your mom? It means a lot. It was definitely a weight lifted off her shoulder. One less thing that she had to stress about. You were telling me that you're not sure how you were going to pay that off, the two of you. I was not sure. My mother was not sure. University President Tony Allen has known and worked closely with President Biden for more than two decades. He says it was the money provided to schools through the recent COVID relief legislation that allowed him to cancel more than 700,000 in unpaid bills in May. We wanted to make sure that no senior walked away from here with any debt. Our students come to the university for quality education, first and foremost, but they're also trying to change the economic trajectory for themselves, their families, and their communities. So you can imagine when COVID hit, uh, there was a big concern that that was not going to happen for a lot of them. Delaware State University, one of many historically black colleges and universities around the country, clearing account balances for returning and graduating students. It doesn't surprise me at all uh, that my colleagues have followed suit. Uh, it is the HBCU philosophy, and when you think about the number of first-generation college students that come to an HBCU, the number of low-resource students that come to an HBCU, this is mission-driven what we are doing. These are the things that we are supposed to do. The issue of student loan debt has been front and center this last year during the pandemic. It's estimated that American borrowers owe around $1.7 trillion in student loan debt. The federal government paused payments, but that extension is about to expire, and bills are expected to come due again in September. Watch you this small. Like so many, Dr. Rajita Small has struggled with debt well into her career. At 38, she works as an HR executive, but is still paying down her loans. She's also helping her mom and grandmother. There's a lot of other financial responsibilities that I have that don't necessarily allow me to do things like save or build wealth. When I think about family planning, if you will, you want to be able to afford to have children. And me personally, you know, I've had to put off that journey because I have this debt. I have these other financial responsibilities. While the majority of borrowers took out loans for two or four year schools, Dr. Small says that she needed a PhD to get ahead. Black women, after all, are often paid much less than white men. I have to get my master's and PhD to compete with that individual, whether, you know, similar school, similar, you know, levels of experience, um, but they, they may also have more wealth than I do. So I have to take off the loans. In one of their only public disagreements, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer yesterday again pushed President Biden to extend the pause on federal student loan payments and cancel up to $50,000 per student in public loans. This pause has actually shown how important canceling student debt is to borrowers and to our economy. We've heard about being, how, how being saddled with this debt has affected millions of Americans' lives on so many choices that they'd like to make. But the ranking Republican member on the House Education Committee disagrees. It's clear that Senator Schumer cares nothing at all for the taxpayers of this country because it is hardworking taxpayers who provided the funds for these students to go to college. And by the way, 70 percent of taxpayers do not have baccalaureate degrees. So where are they in this equation? 
The Biden administration has moved to cancel debt for some students, including some with disabilities and others who were defrauded by a handful of for-profit colleges. But there's a debate in Washington over the limits of his authority. And the president himself so far has rejected proposals for blanket loan forgiveness. Back in February, this exchange. We need at least a $50,000 minimum. What will you do to make that happen? I will not make that happen. It depends on whether or not you go to a private university or a public university. Biden has this past year often talked about the wealth gap that in America often falls along racial lines. Activist Shakia Cherry Donaldson says she hopes the president will consider this issue of student loan debt as essential in the fight for racial equality. You can't try to plug one racial systematic hole without acknowledging that there are several more. And I think that this is one of the lowest hanging fruits that the administration could carry out that would drastically change people of color and particularly black women's lives. Every dollar spent on the computer, on the twin extra long sheets, on tuition, on dorm fees, on the meal plan, it was an investment. And not just me, but my entire bloodline, because I will be opening up new paths and new opportunities for the people that come behind me. Women in particular are estimated to hold nearly two thirds of all outstanding loans. The American Association of University Women wrote about the problem, saying that while the amount of debt women initially take on compared to men is not huge, when women graduate, their debt repayment collides with the gender wage gap and the racial wealth gap to make it harder for them to repay their loans. Back in Delaware, President Allen says he's not talked to President Biden about this debate and respects the work the president has done on higher education. I know you said you're not in the business of giving him advice. I respect that. <laughs> but do you have a message for him on this issue? He understands uh, what students like mine go through. And I think he understands that deep in his bones. Remember where you come from and who you've been in the business of serving uh, for so many years um, across this country and make the decision from there. Trust your gut. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. All right, Mary Alice, thank you. And the Brookings Institute now says most student debt is held by households with zero to negative net worth, which applies to an estimated 19% of black American families compared to 8% of white American families. So for more on this, I'd like to bring in senior fellow at Brookings Met Metropolitan Policy Program, Andre Perry. Uh, Andre, thanks so much for being here. I know we were looking at this uh, Brookings Institution and Jane Family Institute research brief which found that black people take out higher amounts of student loans than every other racial group. So walk me through some of the numbers you found and what do they tell you? Well, it really shows how black people, brown people in this country, low wealth people have really bought into the American dream. Um, we are always told that if you go to college, um, you do the right thing, um, it will... Um, enable you to achieve the American dream. But because many black people and, and others were denied wealth opportunities from past policy, including housing policy, biased criminal justice policies, and others, um, we have low um, wealth. And so um, we have to take out loans. And so the higher proportion of loans taken out by black people is really an example of our striving. But, I, you know, I say loosely that we don't go to college to put people in debt. We need people to go to college, just like we need people to go through K-12 education. But in the K-12 arena, no one is asked to pay back their uh, their grant um, that, they, that everyone receives, essentially, to go to a public school. And, and so we're essentially asking people to do the same thing at the higher ed level. And so we're asking people to take out loans, but it's throttling their ability to buy a car, to buy a home, to uh, start a business. And, and these are the, the uh, accoutrements of the American dream that many people can't achieve early enough so they can reap the benefits of wealth later. And what you're describing, it sounds like it trickles into lots of other areas down the road. So how does this end up affecting low-income areas in general and not just the students themselves? 
Yeah, you know, we, we tend to focus on student debt cancellation as an individual matter. But many individuals with student debt are clustered in the same area. So in Black neighborhoods, you see much more student debt than you will see in in, 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 in white areas. And so, and again, that inhibits our ability to buy homes, to start business businesses, to uh, essentially build community wealth. And that lack of community wealth ends up um, translating to a lack of power, uh, um, um, a lack of influence in, in various arenas. And so we should not look at this as just an individual issue. Um, it is a community one. And one of the comments that was made in the in this um, piece, the uh, the pre-produced piece, you, you heard about fairness, about what does this mean for people who don't go to college, who don't take out loans? Well, there are many wealthy um, 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 tax breaks or tax breaks for the wealthy that low income people do not have. And, and that's a matter of fairness as well. But let's be clear, this money is already spent um, to say we, we're going to cancel this debt is no harm to um, other people in the main. And so we need to stop looking at this as a matter of scarcity. We need to look at the opportunity it will provide the entire country if more people are able to start businesses, more people are, are able to um, purchase home, homes, the entire economy expands, the proverbial pie grows, and everyone's better off. All right, Andre Perry from the Brookings Institution. We appreciate your time today, Andre. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.